this is the Provoke Prawn, and if you've just got yourself a shiny new graphics card, or indeed have been using one for a while but now want to squeeze more performance out of it and get better FPS, then I'm about to show you how the variety of settings to help you out. The first one is in your BIOS, so turn your PC on and mash delete until you get into the BIOS settings. And we're going to look for two different settings. The first one is for XMP or AMD Expo settings. This is actually for your RAM, but this ensures that your RAM is running at maximum speed. So go in there, make sure you turn on XMP or Expo settings, and this will ensure that you get maximum speed out of your RAM, and this will help with overall performance for your system. So it's well worth doing, not just for FPS, but for general performance on your PC as well. If you do find that it doesn't boot after this is turned on, then it may be problems and you may want to try to turn it off again but it's very rare that's an issue. With XMP on, the other thing you want to do is go into the advanced settings, and then what we're going to do here is we're gonna look for something called resizable bar. Where this is will vary from motherboard to motherboard, but you can see under the settings on this gigabyte one here, there's an option for resizable bar support here. Click that and enable it, and this will ensure that your CPU and GPU can talk to each other nicely. Now, once we're into Windows, there's loads of different settings to change in here. And the first one we're going to look for is graphics settings. So hit that Windows Start key and search for graphics settings, and you should find hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This will reduce latency and help with your system performance. Now in Windows 11, it's ever so slightly different, but you search for graphics settings, and then you'll see that there's change default graphics settings option here. So hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is buried under there a little bit. But you will notice there are other things like auto HDR and optimizations for windowed games as well that's worth checking they're turned on too. Now in the graphics settings, you also see that there's a graphics performance preference mode. This enables you to basically set specific performance for different things on your system. So you'll see that from the drop downs, you can select a variety of different apps, whether it's downloaded from the Microsoft Store or installed separately. You can then go in there and choose high performance mode and set for high performance on those specific things. You see me do it on the NVIDIA control panel, but you can also do this on specific games as well. Now in Windows 11, you go into game mode, so search for game mode there. And then what you'll see is there's a related setting for graphics. So click on that and then you'll see there are custom options for different apps. So if you've already run a game, you'll see loads of different ones in here, for example. You can then click on that and then click on options and then either let Windows decide or click on a high performance mode to ensure that that game, when you launch it, gets maximum performance from your GPU and improves the visuals and gets you better FPS. Obviously do this with each and every game that you want to get more FPS out of if it's not already marked as high performance, which it may well be once we've changed these other settings. The next thing to do is to search for game mode settings. So hit the Windows keys, search for game mode, and then look for game mode and turn that on. You can see that Windows then automatically optimizes your PC for gaming, and this can be pretty handy. Also, quick note, if you press Windows key and G, that will then bring up a Microsoft interface that you can use for recording and such. Power settings are the next ones to go to. So search for power and sleep settings. And then on the right hand side, you'll see additional power settings. Click on that and you'll see that it might be in power saver mode or balanced mode to save power. And this is the standards of default settings. But if you want maximum performance, try ultimate performance instead. Now this will obviously use a lot more power on your system, which is something to bear in mind, but it will improve performance as well. This is in a slightly different place in Windows 11. Search for Edit Power Plan and then open that up and you'll find that you then have Change Advanced Power Settings in there. And then you can just select Balanced Power Saver or High Performance. You can see that I've already got that set as Active, but I'd recommend just setting yours to Active and High Performance even already. And then if you look, you'll also see there's settings in here for Intel Graphics Settings, for example. You can see that's set to maximum performance at the moment. So just look for those settings and tweak them and then you should see an improvement in performance. The next one is NVIDIA's control panel. This will only apply if you've got an NVIDIA GPU, but to access this, right click on your desktop and then click NVIDIA control panel or click on more options if you don't see that in your Windows 11. What we're going to do is tweak a few different settings in here. And the first is under the manage 3D settings option here. So click on manage 3D settings and then look for low latency mode. This doesn't actually affect FPS, but it does reduce latency, and it is pretty important and very useful if you're playing fast-paced FPS games or competitive shooters. 
I'd recommend turning low latency mode on here, setting it to ultra. There are some other things that you can also tweak. You can see that if you scroll down a bit more, there's also power management mode. So you can click on that. And again, we can select to prefer maximum performance. So these sorts of tweaks obviously will improve overall performance and combine lots of different things for better overall setup. You also have to make sure you apply these settings. It's also worthwhile checking your monitor settings while we're here. So one of the things you want to do is if you have a G-Sync compatible display, make sure you click on set up G-Sync and enable it in here. You can see that option on the left hand side, you can choose the settings for that and then also go into the resolution tab because what you want to do is make sure your monitor is set to the right refresh rate you can see this monitor for example goes up to 360 hertz refresh rate which is pretty high and most will default to 60 but if you go in here and set 360 hertz what you will find is that will ensure that your screen's running at the right refresh rate which is really important if you're getting maximum fps now you can also access these settings by right clicking on the desktop and clicking display settings. If you go in there, you'll see there's an advanced option for your display and then you can go in and select it from the drop down there. So you, this would work if you don't have NVIDIA control panel, if you're using another GPU from Intel or AMD. Now the next one I recommend is controversial, but this is NVIDIA's GeForce Experience tool. This is a free bit of software you can download with your graphics drivers and we can do various things in here. So if you click on enable experimental features, this will then open up some other things that you can do. GeForce Experience is useful because it will let you know when the latest drivers are dropped and it's always worth having the latest graphics drivers. But you can also do things like this. So you can optimize games automatically to make sure that they give you the best user experience. Now, if you're the sort of person that likes beautiful games with maximum graphic settings, but also decent FPS, you probably won't want to tick that. You might want to individually tweak things yourself, but it is worth doing. Now, if you press Alt-Z, it'll open up an overlay, and in there you can see there's a performance option. Once you're in there, you can then go into the automatic tuning. So you'll see there's an enable automatic tuning. If you flick that switch, what this is doing is it's using GeForce Experience to automatically overclock your GPU to get more performance out of it. Now, you might not want to do this necessarily, but obviously, if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, you're using NVIDIA GeForce Experience to optimize it, you should see a performance boost out of it. So it's worth trying, and it's easy to turn on and off. So you can easily do that. The other benefit here as well with the GeForce Experience is if you press Alt-Z, you can also get an overlay. So you can see your overall performance while you're using it. So you can see that if you go into that HUD, you can set it so that you have on the top right-hand side a performance overlay, which shows your FPS, but also the utilization of your system, your GPU clock speeds and other things. And you'll see that's just on the right-hand side. And that will sit over the top of your game so you'll know whether all the tweaks you've made are actually improving the FPS or not. So you can easily see that at a glance. And you can turn this on and off with Alt and R. And as I said, bring up the overall options with Alt and Z. GeForce Experience is also useful because it allows you to use Shadow Play to do recordings. So that's worth bearing in mind. But if you don't want to use that, you can use MSI's Afterburner instead. Afterburner is a free tool that enables you to overclock things. Open it up, click on the settings cog on the left hand side, click on unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring, and then save those options and apply. Once you've done that, you may need to restart Afterburner, but Afterburner allows you to automatically tweak the performance again, overclocking your GPU without much fuss. So basically what you need to do is you need to turn the core voltage up and then you can basically set it up so it will run and automatically overclock. Now, I'll link to a blog post by MSI which goes into depth on how to use Afterburner and the ways to tweak it if you want to get in a more sort of granular way. But this tool will allow you to overclock and get better performance. Now, I wouldn't use it in combination with GeForce Experience. I'm not saying use both for overclocking your system. This is an alternative to doing it. Afterburner is well thought of, though, and it will work with all GPUs. It's not limited to MSI's GPUs, so it's really easy to use, and it's free, and you basically just have to run the tool to scan your system and then overclock your GPU and improve overall performance. So it's really handy, worth giving a look. The next thing to do is actually on a game by game basis. So many games now have options depending on what graphics card you've got and depending on what game you're playing for various different AI powered settings. 
So there are things like NVIDIA's DLSS, which is AI super resolution, which gives you a higher frame rate and sort of balances between different performance modes. So you'll see DLSS down the bottom here has the option of off, performance, balanced and quality. Now, if you want maximum FPS, you'd set it to performance mode. But what you might find is that doesn't look as good as it does normally. So you may want to try balanced instead. Obviously, ultra quality will give you less FPS, but better visuals. But with it turned on, you'll actually find that you get more FPS than you would as standard. Now, Intel's XESS is Intel's variant of DLSSS, but it actually works with loads of different graphics cards. So you don't need to worry about having an NVIDIA graphics card. In different games, you may find there are different options. So for example, in Dead Island 2, you can see we've got AMD Fidelity Super Resolution 2. There's also FSR 3 as well now, depending on what games you're playing and what hardware you're running. But you may find that you have different options. So you've got DLSS, AMD, and Intel. Don't try and combine them all if you do see them all but you can try different ones and see which works for you. Balance is probably the most logical choice to try if you want a good balance of performance and quality. But if you want all about the FPS, then try performance mode, but you may see the graphics suffer ever so slightly, but it does vary wildly from game to game and depending on your hardware as well. If you've done all these things and you found it's not worked, then I'd recommend trying removing your graphics drivers using DDU and doing a fresh install. DDU is Display Driver Uninstaller. It's a free tool that you can use to wipe your system of all its graphics drivers with a clean installation. So what it does is it just deletes everything off there and it makes sure that there are no problems with your drivers. So maybe there's a conflict with old drivers causing issues. So before you start running it, Head over to relevant graphics driver place. So for example, NVIDIA drivers and download the latest drivers. You want to make sure you've got the newest ones downloaded to your system. Now DDU is recommended to run in safe mode to get the best performance out of it. But you can also run it in straight windows if you're not having major problems, but you just want to make sure you've got a clean installation of the latest drivers. So download the latest drivers, run DDU, then install the latest drivers for your graphics card and then try and make sure all those settings are set up. It's worth bearing in mind that some of the settings I've gone through in this video might reset if you install new drivers, so it's worth keeping that in mind. So add this video to your watch later playlist so that you can come back in future and watch it again to work out what tips and tricks you need for your system. But hopefully you'll see an FPS improvement. Let me know in the comments if you did. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.